Hello friends. Our today's topic is insertion sort and its running time. This sorting technique we people use from our childhood. Even that time when we played playing cards, we need to arrange all playing cards in a way that our game we can play easily. So what we need to do, we need to shift the cards like this, the first card, the second card, third card. If we need to place any card between any of the cards, what we need to do, we, after shifting few of the cards, appropriate space, we make between the cards and then we put the new card at that place. The so putting the card in a place, in a gap, this concept is known as insertion sort. If you are arranging it in an order. Look at the algorithm. Our algorithm has total 8 steps. Each step has its own importance. So let us read each step very carefully. The algorithm is accepting the array of length n. Here the n is the size of our array. In the first line we are having a loop which is starting from second element and it will go to the last element of the array. What we are doing, we are holding the value of the second element in a variable key. What we will do now, we will compare this key element with all those elements which are to the left of the key element. Right now, only one element to the left of the key element. When we compare the key element with the all element which are to the left of the key element, we place to we place the key element at appropriate location that uh, the entire left side should always be in a sorted manner if you go through if you go to the line number 3 it, it is a comment basically it will not execute what exactly it is saying insert aj aj means the second element right now into the sorted sequence from a1 to aj minus 1 that is to the left part of the aj now how will you do that from line number 4 to line number 7 we are making a, a place where we can put that element put that key element so how we are doing so because we need to go to the left of the j so we are initializing our i variable with the j minus 1 and we will decrease i from j minus 1 to the first element of our array. So now in the line number 5 we are having a nested loop. In this loop we are putting the condition when i is greater than 0 it means we have not reached yet to the first element and the value of the key element is, is smaller than to the comparing element and our comparing element is ai. So what will happen if we compare the key element to the left and side elements either the key element will be smaller to the compared element or will be greater. If it is smaller to the compared element, what we need to do? We need to shift that compared element to the right hand side. So what will happen? A blank space will be created in the left hand side of the array which is already sorted. 
we need to shift the element one by one till this loop is not failed that this loop can be failed either when i become zero it means all those element we want to compare has been compared or we find our key element is smaller than our key element is greater than to any of the compared element when we find our key element is greater than to the compared any of the compared element we stop the loop and a blank space is has been created and we need to put our key element at that blank space so in the line number 8 this what we are doing because when we were comparing so the loop reached to the ith position and the blank space which has created it was at i plus 1 so we are posting our key element at i plus 1th place so this is the way that how insertion sort works now try to understand the whole process with the help of an example just look at this example we will go step by step initially we are running our algorithm from the point from the second element and we are comparing our second element with the first element first element which was which is to the left of the second element the value of the key element is 2 and the value of the left hand side of element is 5 so we are comparing 2 with the 5 we find that 2 is smaller than 5 so when our key element will be less than to the compared element we will shift it so this 5 will be shifted to the right hand side and a blank space will be created where the 5 was earlier and uh, we find that the two cannot be compared further so it means it will loop will terminate and we will place the two at a position where the 5 was initially placed initially it is looking that we have swapped both the element but actually we have not swapped we are just shifting the left hand side of element to the right hand side when we are coming to the initial loop again and we have reached to the third element when we are at the third element it means the value of the j become 3 just look at here we have initially started with the second element and when this whole pass will complete we will reach here and the value of the j will become 3 so when the value of the j will be 3 so the key element will be 4 and we compared it all those element which are to the left of this 4 so how many element right now to the left of this 4 are 2 and 5 so initially we compare 4 with 5 so 4 is smaller than 5 so shifting will take place so 5 will be shift to the right hand side and then we will compare 4 with the 2 because 4 is not smaller than 2 it means the while loop this while loop this while loop will terminate from this particular condition and by this particular line we will place our element at appropriate gap so 5 will be shifted 2 will not shift so 4 will be placed where the 5 was earlier placed so the new sequence will be 2 4 5 2 now we are comparing 6 that is our the value of the j will be now 4 and we are comparing this 6 the key value 6 with the value which is to the left of this 6 that is 5 and we are finding that the 6 is already greater than to 5 what does it mean we are coming back to the algorithm it means this loop this while loop will not execute anyhow why because the value of the ai is already smaller than to the key value 
so this condition failed in the first instance and it will directly reach to the line number 8 and because we have reduced the value of the i by 1 and if we have increased it again so that means we are will we, we will remain at the same position so if we find that uh, our key element is greater than to the element two of its left so there is no need of any kind of shifting now value of the j will be reached to the 5 and the key element will be 1 now 1 is comparing with the 6 and we are finding key values smaller than to the compared element so it will shift 1 will 5 it will shift 1 will 4 it will shift 1 will 2 and it will shift now there is no further elements are left that one can be compared now we are coming back to the algorithm now this time this loop will terminate from this particular condition so this while loop having two condition one is i greater than zero and one is a i greater than key so in few of the time the loop will terminate from this condition and in few of the cases the loop will terminate from this particular condition now all the element has been shifted to the right hand side so one will be placed in the starting of the array in this example in this particular example when we were in the first case it was looking like that means we are swapping the element in the second case it was also looking like that we are swapping the element in the third case nothing was happening but in this fourth case it is clear actually we have not been swapped any of the element we are shifting the element to the right hand side and then we are finding appropriate place to play to store this key value now the value of the j will become 6 and the key value will be 3 this this case is very important so we are comparing 3 with the 6 3 is smaller than to the 6 so it will shift 3 is smaller than to the 5 it will shift 3 is smaller than 4 it will shift but 3 is not smaller than 2 that means we need to compare till we find that our key element is greater than to any of the compared element when we find that yes our key element is greater than to the element compared element so we just came back a place and put the key value at that place so our this key value will be placed at the third position and here you can see the all the elements of array are sorted now now let us take one more example in this example total number of elements we are having eight the loop will start from the second element we are comparing element value key value 3 with the left hand side and we are finding that shifting should be happen so shift 4 has been shifted to the place where the 3 was initially stored and 3 is placed where the initially 4 was stored now we are we have started with the third element the key value is 2 so 2 is compared with 4 so 4 will shift 2 compared with 3 3 will shift then 2 will be stored at the where the 3 was placed so this is the new sequence 2 3 4 now we are reached here the at the fourth element the fourth element the key value is greater than to the 4 so there is no need of any kind of shifting now we have reached to the this particular value this value is also greater than to the 10 so again there is no need of shifting now we reach to the this value 1 we have compared it with 12 yes 1 is smaller than to 12 so 12 will shift then 1 with compared with 10 10 will shift then 1 compared with 4 4 will shift then 1 compared with 3 3 will shift then 1 compared with 2 2 will shift and finally 1 will be placed at the first position now we have reached to the 5 compared 5 with the 12 yes it is smaller than to the 12 it will shift compared 5 with the 10 yes it is smaller than to the 10 10 will shift 5 compared with 4 no it is not smaller than 4 so the loop will terminate and the 5 will be placed where the 
10 was initially placed in, in that gap. Now similarly we do for this last element 12 and 10 will shift and 6 will be placed at this particular position and you can find the entire of the array has been sorted. So this is the way that how insertion sort works. Now we are coming to the important part of this subject that is our analysis of insertion sort algorithm. When we do the analysis or to calculate the running time of any of the algorithm, we should be very careful. There are many ways by that you can compute the running time of any algorithm. The running time is based upon on many factors. Our insertion sort is based upon incremental approach. The another approach can be divide and conquer which we will discuss in another video. So when we are try to compute the running time of any incremental algorithm, what you need to do? You need to find the number of execution of each line. It means that a particular line will execute how many times when the entire algorithm will run. And we try to compute the cost of each line. If we able to compute the cost of each line and the particular line runs how many times, what we need to do, we multiply them and find that a particular line has what cost basically. That is known as cost of each statement. Just look at this particular figure. In this figure, you can see that each of the line has different cost for its execution. Means that we suppose that line number 1 has its costing value C1. C1 is a costing value which it may be it may be depend on many factors, your your processor, your environment, your operating system. It can depend on the, on many of the parameters. Uh, we are not uh, going in detail of those parameters. We are thinking that it will be a constant time. It means this line when this will then this line will run again and again. Every time it will take a constant time. Line number two may be the different from the line number one, so it may take the different time. Line number three. Because it is a comment line and it cannot be executed. So its cost of its execution is zero. Line number four, we are making, we are representing its cost by C4, then C5, C6, C7 and C8. Now, we will see that each line will run how many times. Now, look at the line number one. Here we are having the loop from 2 to the length of the A. Length of the A means length of the array. Length of the array, what we have supposed in the starting of our discussion, it was N. So it means this loop will run from 2 to N. If we count the number of elements from 2 to N will be, it will be equal to N minus 1. What does it mean? It means that this loop will allow you to enter in its body for n minus 1 time. The meaning is that you are coming from top. The loop will check your condition and it will allow you to enter into that loop. So it will allow you for n minus 1 time to enter in its body. So, but this loop is not a finite loop. Somehow it will be terminate. When it will be terminate? When the length of the array will reach n and you will try to execute this loop again and you find that the length of array has already achieved, then this loop will be terminate. Meaning is that for all true conditions, this loop will execute 
but for the false condition this loop will terminate so this loop will execute for n minus 1 true conditions and for one false condition so the total execution for this line will be n minus 1 plus 1 is equal to n and what about the lines which are inside into that loop will run exactly n minus 1 time if they are not again in any of the loop so line number 2 will run n minus 1 time line number 3 will run n minus 1 time line number 4 will run n minus 1 time now we are coming to the line number 5 line number 5 we are find, finding here that again there is a loop that is a nested loop it means when the control is coming from over the line number 2, 3, 4 and reach to the line number 5 here it will check the condition if the condition is false the line number 6 and 7 will not execute and it will directly reach to the 8th line if the condition is true it will enter into the line number 6 and 7 and will run until the condition has not become false so it is not easy to calculate the number of count for the line number 5 so what we are supposing that this particular line will run when the value of the j will vary from 2 to end and each time it each time it will take different times compared to the previous one so when the value of the j we are supposing it is taking t2 time when the value of the j is 3 we are supposing it will take t3 time that is different from the previous one so so on the total execution of this line will be t2 t3 t4 t5 till tn and we are finding the summation of all those lines if the line number 5 is executing 42 times how many times the line number 6 will execute when we were calculating this line number 1 we have find that if line number 1 is executing n times so line number 2 will execute n minus 1 time because line number 1 is the loop line which execute for n minus 1 false condition true condition and for one false condition and in this particular line number 5 if we are supposing it is taking tj counts so how much time this 6 will take 100% it will take tj minus 1 because it will be 1 less than compared to its loop statement so line number 6 and 7 will take tj minus 1 time and the summation of the summation variables will remain same there is no change line number 8 which is out of this uh, nested loop it is the part of the for loop it will take only the n minus 1 time so in this uh, particular statement i have discussed the whole concept that how you have computed the execution time of line number 5 to line number 8 now how to get the total time of this insertion sort it's very easy what we need to do we need to multiply this c1 with this cn c2 with this c n minus 1 0 with this n minus 1 c4 with this n minus 1 c5 with this particular sigma c6 with this sigma c7 with this sigma c8 with this n minus 1 and we will add all those multiplicated values so look at here c1 n c2 n minus 1 0 n minus 1 c4 n minus 1 c5 c6 c7 and c8 it means the whole equation if you will able to get the sum of this equation that will be equal to the tn which is the total time of our algorithm running time but this running time is not very clear what we need to do 
all when we calculate the running time of any of the algorithm we always try to convert it in any of the function which is totally depends upon the n that means we compute it in a function of n only the st n is the same thing a function n which we are representing by t because here we the t denotes the time basically now to make this equation simpler we need to discuss the different different cases of our algorithm so what are the our cases cases means any of the algorithm can behave differently for different cases meaning is that the algorithm can run fast for any of the case any of the input case and the algorithm can run slow for any different input case so what are these cases basically so here we are supposing that the input array is already sorted input array is already sorted it means our input is actually our desired output so when we are giving the actual input which is actually the output so how our algo will run how our algo will behave so let us see this part and what is the opposite part of this one when our array is input array is stored in descending order meaning is that it is totally reverse of our actual output if our array is totally reverse of the actual output it means this algorithm need to work very hard to sort to arrange all the element in a way in which we need to get the output so that's why we are having two cases one is the best case in which the array is already sorted and one is the worst case in which the array is reverse sorted what will happen when the array is already sorted so look at here when the array is already sorted and for every key element you reach to the line number 4 and when after reaching to the line number 4 you are reaching to the this in nested loop and you are at this condition ai greater than key this condition will never be get true it will always remain false but it will always remain false that means line number 6 and 7 will never execute because if the array is stored in increasing order all the right hand side of element will always be greater than to the its left hand side of element so it means for every j the line number 5 will execute exactly once and line number 6 and 7 will not execute for sorted sequence of the array so what will be happen with that equation in that equation c6 and c7 this particular part will become zero and for c5 because it will execute exactly one time for each j that means it will it will execute exactly n minus 1 time like any of any other of diff, any any other diff, uh, lines so this is our Uh, uh, T n, which is updated based upon the best case. So C five will run exactly n minus one time. C six and C seven will not run anyhow. So the total time of T n when the array is sort sorted, it is like that. Now what we are doing? We are arranging them. We are simplifying them, and we are finding like this. C1 plus C2 plus C4 plus C5 plus C8 multiplied by n, then minus a constant. So what we are trying to do, we are writing it into the simpler way. We are replacing all these constants by a different variable that is a, and we are replacing all these variables, summation of all these variable by another uh, variable b, and we are finding this is our 
new form an plus b and we find that it is a linear function an plus b it is a linear function of n which shows the linear growth of the function so the com this is what this is what we have converted we have computed the running time of insertion sort in best case is somehow equivalent to the linear function of n later we will compute convert it into the notation asymptotic notations but with this part we will do it later now we are coming to the worst case worst case is mean that the array is already the array is totally reversed from our desired output so what will happen in that case we are coming back to the algorithm when the array is reversed totally reversed what will happen so the element which is to the right of the left of element will always be to the smaller than to that always be smaller that means this while loop will exit only from this part this while loop will exit only from this part just wait a minute In the when the array is reverse order, it will never be get out from this part of our loop because the key element will always be smaller than to the left side of element. It means this this loop will executed for maximum for maximum time, and the line number six and seven will execute exactly one less than that how many time this line number 5 will execute so we will try to calculate this time that how many time this line number 5 will execute just imagine if in the left hand side we are having the 5 element so how many time this while loop will execute it will execute exactly 6 times if we are having four element into the left hand side it will execute exactly five times if we are having the three element into the left hand side it will, it will execute only the four times what does it mean actually the line number five will execute two times when j will be two three times when j will be three four times when j will be four so line number five will execute total number of time from 2 to n the summation of 2 to n so if you try to get the sum of 2 plus 3 plus 4 till n it is equivalent to the arithmetic progression series so we should know the summation formula of the arithmetic progression and from that formula uh, we will try to able to get the sum of 2 to n so line number will 5 will run that much of time and line number 6 and 7 will run exactly one less than that how many time line number 5, 5 will execute so this is the formula for any arithmetic progression which runs from 1 to n but our progression is running from 2 to n so that's why we have subtracted this 1 from the summation of 1 to n and to calculate the summation of this particular one we are having this formula okay this is totally based upon the arithmetic progression if you simplify that you will able to get that 
so it means line number 5 will execute exactly this much of time and line number 6 and 7 will execute exactly this much of time so we will put these value in the actual function of tn which we have initially get it here to make it simpler so here we are putting the value of the tj summation tj value of the summation tj minus 1 value of the summation tj minus 1 and if we try to simplify here we will see that the n will be multiplied with n and it will get n square so few of the term will have n square few of the terms will have n few of the terms will have constants only so if you simplify them so we'll find that c5 by 2 plus c6 by 2 plus c7 by 2 multiplied with n square and this entire terms multiply with n and this entire terms is the summation of the constants only and you can rewrite this equation in the form of the a n square plus b n plus c which is equivalent to the quadratic function so in worst case it shows quadratic growth of the function so it means what we can say the insertion sorts uh, behave differently in worst case and in best case in best, best case it grows like linear function and in worst case it grows like quadratic function now what about the average case we have already discussed the best case and the worst case what about the average case but before that we should also be answer why we are focusing so much on the worst case because worst case always gives you the upper bound the guaranteed upper bound of any of the algorithm it means your algo cannot be worse from that uh, uh, from that means our algorithm cannot be worse from that so it is the worst case running time when we have two algorithms and we want to compare which algorithm is better we always compare their worst case what about the average case average case is somehow uh, equal to the or a bad as a worst case so there is no need to uh, compute the average case independently if you able to compute the worst case so the average case part has also been covered so what is the order of growth now the order of growth is that when you have computed a function either it is a linear function or it is a quadratic function just ignore all those coefficients and lower order terms of your n just keep the higher order term of the n that means in linear equation the higher order terms of the n is n only and in the quality equation the higher order terms of the n is n square so the complexity of the insertion sort algorithm in vast case can be described as theta n square and in best case it can be described as theta n but always remember one thing when you are saying the worst case running time is equal to n square it does not equal to n square the function will grow like that n square so there is a difference between actual complexity and the representable complexity we normally use the representable complexity to represent the complexity of any of the algorithm that representable complexities are basically the classes the big classes where many of the function can be light so uh, in this video we have what we have covered we have covered the insertion sort how it works then we have seen the running time how to calculate it for the best case for the worst case for the average average case in the last of the video we have discussed that how we can write 
any of the function to its representable class. So thank you friends.